A determinist has endless questions for a free willer. Maybe you can answer. <laughs> Where and how would an outside agent of free will, or ghost in the machine, or soul, interface with our human form? Why and when would our normal brain functions stop and free will take over and animate us and form our thoughts? We clearly do not get to freely choose how and when our, our free will gets interfaced. So we don't choose like, okay, now I want to have free will and now I don't. It's got to be on its own autopilot somehow. If we did, then we would already know the answers to these questions. The soul would need a mind of its own, would it not? Isn't that another feedback loop? How else would it be able to work for us? If the free will agent chooses its own method of interfacing with our deterministic neural network, why would this be considered free? That sounds more like control. Anyone want to comment on that? I could, but I don't want to be on the one to talk here. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so here's where I talk about indeterminism, and instead of just reading the whole thing, I'll just kind of say it quickly what I think. Supposedly, the fabric of the universe is this quantum foam. It's just like the bottommost basement level of the universe is quantum indeterminism. So whether it's random or not, we don't really know. There could be like a, another outside causal thing causing these to just appear indeterministic and random. Who knows? But there's really no denying there's something going on. It's really weird, indeterministic. It's called quantum physics, quantum mechanics, quantum particles, quantum foam. Okay. A lot of people use that as, like Tim said, a back door. <laughs> they see that, okay, there is something weird in science that science can't explain. Let's use that to convince people that there's such thing as God and free will. Um, so here's kind of my view of quantum indeterminism. Well, it's one loose view. I compare it to the, the noise floor of the universe, right? There's this foam going on in the noise floor. Um, if you ever read the book, The Elegant Universe by Brian Greene, he has a good picture in there. It shows a bottom, like a square, zoomed way in, and it shows random quantum foam. It just looks like random stuff he drew in there. And then there's another square up here where it's zoomed out a little, and the quantum foam's kind of smaller, it's more flat, zoomed out. Next thing you know, it's zoomed out, it just looks like a grid. You can't even tell there's quantum foam because we're zoomed way out into the, we're back into the macro world, but you just can't detect it. It doesn't really seem to even affect us. I sort of compare that in my book to the noise floor and analog audio recording. It's absolutely impossible to record music in an analog way, even digital, without some kind of a noise floor. Just because of the nature of the electronics that we're using, always adds a noise floor. So what we do as musicians is we record the music as loudly as possible um, before it saturates um, so that the noise floor, which is always just a constant level that just has to do with the electronics, is just way down here. So a really pristine, good analog recording, even the person with the finest tuned golden ears cannot detect the noise when they're listening to the music. You just can't hear it. It's so buried. The, the loudness of the a clean audio signal blasts through the noise, in other words. So, and then I liked your, when you brought up Newtonian physics, that actually kind of reminded me of something else. I'm not talking about noise now, but I'm just talking about something else. Um, the kind of chaotic influence that gravity wells have on each other. It's super, super, super complicated. Um, it's basically a reflection of matter. So it's just as complicated as matter, and even more so because gravity wells interact. If you have a spaceship, and you just put it out into space and nudge it, it's going to go kind of crazy in a, what appears to be almost random, to totally unpredictable, riding the uh, interactions of the gravity wells. But what we do is we put a rocket on it, <laughs> with a mapped trajectory, we blast through the noise of basically chaos, chaos theory that's really going on out there. See what I mean? So quantum indeterminism, way down in the basement. We're up here, we're moving, we're huge, and we're big, and we're fast, and we don't, just don't notice it. I mean, the transistor, you know, the, the basic block of building a chip, uh -huh. it wouldn't work without quantum mechanics. Okay. And then you have this huge computer that is based only on that, you know, so. 
So it, it does, it does affect, matter. It does affect us in the macro world. Yeah. I mean, and it has to if it's really the fabric of the universe. Of Unless course, it's going to affect it. us. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're looking at it. <laughs> Unless you're looking at it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's the definitely. <laughs> so the way I see that is the determinant. When we say determinism, when I say determinism. I just mean that that's the overwhelmingly stronger system going on that's blasting through indeterminism that's there. It's impo I guess there's some reason why it would just be impossible not to have it, as weird as it is. Just like it's impossible not to have noise in a recording. You just can't get out of, can't get out of it. Um, but the, the universe is cranking along in real time, computing. If something random or indeterministic happens, well, that happens, and then it just keeps cranking along. So there, there is stuff happening, but I don't think it has anything to do with this, this idea of free will. While there are undeniable mysteries and paradoxes in the closet, and I'm one of the closet people, it's illogical and irresponsible to toss unnecessary layers of mysteries into the mix that are unobservable. We can observe. We can. <laughs> <laughs> Untestable and even undefinable, such as free will, God, or pixie dust. Notice I didn't list quantum <laughs> Indeed, the, the logical conclusion for a determinist is to assume that the universe is deterministic right down to our thought patterns. And then I say here, except for quantum indeterminism, which might explain a few things about our thought patterns, but no determinist call it free will. And the determinist does not let that sway one moment of their free feeling conscious daily life. A free willer would call it a disconnect, right? A free willer would think that a determinist is kind of disconnected somehow. How can you be, act you don't think so? Not necessarily. Okay, good. <laughs> But a lot of people I've talked to think that. How can you think morality has any meaning, and how can you live your life when you know you're just a robot down here on this level? So for some reason, I think it's a beautiful thought. I actually find it empowering. It's worth noting the positive attitude of a determinist who points out that morality has always tended towards good, although it has been a very bumpy curve, like a very gradually, positively trending stock market. I think if we weren't tending towards good, we would have perished by now. If we didn't have moral codes, we would have long ago perished. Moral codes come about in almost every civilization. Precisely the reason morality tends towards good and not bad is because humans evolved an instinctual <clears throat> balancing act of self-interest and cooperation that tends to lead to good outcomes for all involved. And by the way, I talk about that a lot in my economics chapter called Liberty Chapter. Over the millennia, observing this phenomenon more often than not led to the desire to continue that good behavior, and the cycle continued. Morality is as legitimately a part of nature as galaxy formation, tectonic plate shifting, bird migration, the stock market, or weather patterns. As cold and heartless as this may sound, be patient, grasshopper. <laughs> There's another level that we must think about in terms of morality. And that is our day-to-day -day superficial perception in the macro world. This seems to be the only level that free willers want to speak on when having this discussion. And I mentioned that before. It's the level where our consciousness cascades, where feelings and wants and morals actually play out. But this level of speaking is, is um, actually totally me meaningless in a discussion about true determinism. We all agree that on this top level, it is the way it is. 